Hey guys, long time no see. Off for a hammock camp today. Vicky's just dropped me off. Uh, my bag is fully, fully loaded. Right, yeah, so I've got my Comore SF Sabre 45 in there. I've um, got my hammock, tarp, sleeping bag, all sorts of stuff with me. Frying pan won't fit in my bag, so I had to bring that with me. And um, I've just stopped on the way because we go past the most amazing hand pressed apple juice place just up the road from me. So that's for the morning to go with my bacon egg butty, well, vegan bacon and an egg butty. And yeah, just kind of walk the camp now. Uh, it's about three quarters of a mile, I think. Found it the other day when we were walking the dogs. Um, yeah, so it looked cool. I've not been in there yet, but that's good. So let's go. Oh, I could already. <laughs> I walked up there. <laughs> but this bag weighs quite a bit. I've not weighed it, but uh, it acts like it's fully laden with my stuff. And obviously, hammock camp and stuff weighs more than a tent and all that kind of normal backpacking stuff. So, not been out for ages though. I've not been out since I think it was February, my last camp. Um, yeah, Minions, uh, the cheese ring. That was my, my Minions Wild Camp video. I'll put a link in the description if you've not watched it and you want to. That was my last camp, that was in February. Did a video a few weeks ago, that was just like a local you know, walk. But yeah, actual camping, I've not been out now for almost six months. It's almost August, it's like the 29th or 30th of July today. So, figured I better do a camp because it's been so long. It's kind of a good job that um, there's no one around because I've got this massive bag on, carrying a frying pan, Looking like the littlest hobo. <laughs> As usual, all the best ones are right at the back, but I'm gonna grab this guy here. He looks good. Don't drop him, don't drop him. Mmm. Oh yeah, that is nice. A lot earlier this year than the normal are. It's normally like in the autumn when you come out. At September time, it's July. And the road you hope. <laughs> Could almost be mistaken. I don't think this was a rainforest, it's like vines everywhere, ferns, all sorts of stuff. Like, we're next to the sea in Cornwall. <laughs> Speaking of the sea, you'll see the sea in a minute. There we go. Right, so there's this lovely meadow. So the grass is a bit died back at the minute. And we are going over there. There's a the sea, there's a couple of uh, big container ships. You won't be able to see them on the GoPro, but they are massive from here. Yeah, this place looks like it hasn't been used for ages. There's um, like water troughs and stuff there. Obviously the grass is really long, so I think we're good. Um, this gate isn't locked. It's just got some rope on it and it says, please keep closed livestock grazing. Obviously there's no livestock at the minute and has been for a good while. So I think tonight, I should be good, I won't get interrupted. Which is like always good. <laughs> Don't like being uh, on edge when I'm camping, just in case I piss off the farmer with a shotgun or something, you know? Right, so this is home for the night. It's pretty dark in here already, but I've got my uh, GoPro light and things. But yeah. Please shut the gate sheep grazing so like I say it's not locked so I should be yeah, okay I can smell smoke so don't know if there's uh, anyone around but we'll soon see this looks like it's been used for um bushcraft there's quite a few little fire bits dotted around the place um so yeah we'll just tread lightly don't leave a trace obviously Right, so uh, change of plan. We're going coastal. Um, I was scouting a spot in that last bit of woods, and I could hear like voices, you know, pretty much next to me. Um, I think kind of over the hedge. And then, as I was looking, I saw the gate open, <laughs> and I saw people walking in. So I thought, nah, if it's like pissed up teenagers and stuff, I don't want to be camped next to them all night. Uh, so I walked through the woods, got on this um, the coast path road. And then as I come down one side of the woods, 
couples come the other side, obviously they're just they're the ones that we're cutting through with all the spear fishing gear. But now I've walked down a big hill to get onto here. I don't want to go back up there to the woods carrying this. So <laughs> we'll walk into a spot I found months ago, well oh, a year ago actually. Um, it's literally next to like the sea on a bit of a kind of island bit of land that kind of juts out next to the water. Um, I hope it's not too far from here. But then this road looks the same pretty much the whole way down. So we'll try and find it. And that's where we're going. Yeah, looking at it now, I've got part way down the track. This is definitely the spot. And I think it's actually a better choice than the other one. I'd take my bag off and like basically bum shuffle down this path. Cause it is steep as hell. The ground's really soft. And I'm carrying about 65 kilos. <laughs> not that much, but you know, it weighs quite a lot. So we're going to go steady. Nice and slow. We'll get down there and we'll set up camp. If you guys can hear that. I've just spooked a load of deer when I came down. <laughs> Didn't have the camera running at the time, but I've seen about four deer, I think like muntjac. And um, just bounding down there. It went that way. So we might see him in the night once I'm set up camp. It's gone quiet again. Keep an eye out if I see him. I'll show you guys. But yeah, this is um <laughs> It's a long time since I've been down here. Wasn't this overgrown last time? Right, so we've come from the path way up there. Down here, zigzagging, tripping over vines and everything. Past this, and then this. It's home for the night. The sea is right there. Right, first things first, I've just seen a deer running up the hill there. <laughs> Camera's over there, so I missed it again. But yeah, I need to take this coat off and this bag because I am roasting. Oh, that's it, this weighs oh, a ton. All right, so I'm thinking, put a hammock up between these two trees. And I've got that view of the sea. Um, I wish I brought my fishing rod, really, because I could have caught my teeth. As it happens, I've got a uh, veggie chili with rice, a couple of beers, and I've brought my little fire pit. And uh, this looks like a good spot for a fire because people have had them before. There's not really much kind of debris or dry stuff around. It's just solid, like ground here. So that's good. I'll get the bush box out in a minute. And uh, yeah, we'll set up camp. Right, so uh, camp set up, 25 minutes that took. Um, I thought I was doing a time lapse, but I've just come to view it back and it's just a normal video. So <laughs> don't know how much of that I'll put in. Um, I'll probably just speed up and put key bits in. But yeah, camp is set up. Um, it's a bit, not what I was aiming for, um, mainly because this tree here is too thick for my hammock straps. I was planning to go between these two. But I've only brought my uh, shorter DD straps with me and the whoopee slings, I didn't bring my longer ones. So next time I'll come, I will bring those ones. So instead, we've gone around this tree with the straps and then whoopee slings. And then around this tree with the straps and the whoopee slings. Pegged out here, guy line. And then that one is tied on the tree. That way I get a kind of, um, you know, I can sit in the hammock a bit of a nice view here and then this side same again once I'm in there I can see I might raise this one up a little bit in a minute but yeah that's camp set up kind of get some food on now because I'm starving all right so as you can see camp is set up now just gonna whack some food on really simple kit I've brought um, I've got my Trangia a uh, little spirit burner my zebra 12 centimeter billy can just got some uh, orzo um pasta whatever it is and a tin of chili and just a couple of days so i'm gonna get that on now make some food and then there's plenty of um twigs deadfall all sorts of stuff and um, there's even some logs there that someone's very kindly sewn up for me um i'm guessing people use this spot obviously i'll uh Make it like I've not been here when I pack up tomorrow morning. But I might use some of those logs. 
my actually no i'm going to use what's around me and stick in my firebox and leave that for whoever's put the effort into cutting them because i don't want to be cheeky and gate crash someone else's camp and then we'll find some wood make a fire um and then yeah just settle into the evening got my kindle with me so i'm going to read um a book i think it's called 500 mile walkies um it's a guy who did the coast path with his dog a few years ago um so that should be good um it's highly recommended i've not read it yet but it's been on my kindle for ages so i'm gonna give that a go and then um yeah just sit and admire well I say I admire the view, but it's clouding over now. Um, just sit and listen to the sea, really. And just enjoy being in nature again. It's been so long. Uh, where's my lighter? <laughs> GoPro, stop recording. So it's going to get the um, stove going now. I always just light a stick. Um, you dip it in the alcohol first. Light it on fire. And you can use that then to uh, get your stove going without having to get too close to it. Yeah, we go. That's going now. So we'll get some water on. Get the uh, orzo chucked in there. Just brought, I think it's 140 grams. It said on the packet to use 75 grams, but that was like nothing. So I've got a full tin of chili as well. So work that in there. Pour some water on. This will take the longest, so I'll do this first. That uh, should be about enough. Get this going on the transient. And then, uh, yeah, let's crack open a beer or something. Got Tesco veggie chili. Um, that's gonna be yum. That also is almost done, so I'll give that a drain somehow. Um, not got a colander with me, but I'll have to improvise. And then um, get the chili on. I will show you guys where I'm camped in a minute. I'm just gonna get some food in me first and a beer, and then I'll get the camera pan around and show you guys. I've not seen the deer come back yet, but I'm gonna keep an eye out for them, because if I see them, I will show you. I did see a couple while setting up, doing the time lapse, but obviously the GoPro was recording, so I couldn't show you guys. Um, could have got my phone out really, couldn't I? Didn't think of that. I'm glad I brought that extra because that's you know almost a decent amount there. Um, chili is now on. I think next time I'm just going to bring my Soto Windmaster because that was like three quarters full. That's 500 mil of um, bioethanol. That was three quarters full when I set off. Um, and I've not got much left, so that last bit. I'm hoping this heats up my chili. This last bit I'm going to try and save for the morning for a coffee. Uh, and my ooh, vegan bacon and egg sandwich that I'm going to make and enjoy with my apple juice that I picked up from the place on the way in. Right. I've got the stainless steel one because I couldn't justify 150 quid for the titanium. <laughs> so as good as it is, it's a little bit bulky. A little bit heavy. Right. We're not burning crisps, we're actually burning um, these things. Awesome tinder I found earlier. I were down Anthony Estate near us and there's a load of trees that have been chopped down obviously when it was stormy and stuff and they've cut up with the chainsaw all these trees. And I thought that is awesome kindling. I cannot not get that. So we um we got some meal deals and then um, save the crisp packets and we've saved all the kindling we can. <laughs> That's a dead easy, you're not gonna faff around doing fire and not gonna faff around doing ferro rods and all that stuff. Just gonna light this and away we go. Chuck some twigs in. And this is gonna be our TV for the night. I'm going to quickly show you guys before it goes dark. This is where I'm camped. So right next to the sea. I've actually been in all these inlets here on my kayak from a uh, Corsand, which is right around that corner there. 
been in every single one of these little bays and inlets. Uh, so yeah, this is where we are in this little sticky outy bit of land. Camp is there. It's the fire, got the hammock. It's DD Super Light 3x3. Actually, I'll just show you guys quickly. Yeah, DD Super Light 3x3, Coyote Brown. DD Frontline uh, in the Multicam. So if you can see that. Uh, we've got the Thermarest Snuggler under blanket. OEX Leviathan 900. And then I've got, literally today, my new Thermarest. Um, I forgot what it's called now. I'll stick it on the screen. <laughs> this pillow basically anyway, it's meant to be really good. Really cozy, I tried it at home already. Looking forward to using that tonight. So I haven't really used a pillow in a hammock before, so looking forward to that. So fire's going, got plenty of wood. Let's quickly show you guys the other side. So this is what we're dealing with. Not too shabby, eh? Kind of tempted to try and get down there one day. That might be pretty cool, a baby bag or something. Got the Cornish coast right here. There is a little path down there as well, so we'll go down there in a minute and have a look. I won't go too far, but this is basically, this is just below camp. So obviously if I brought my fishing rod, my little uh, compact travel one, I could have fished off there, potentially caught some food. So next time we come here, we might give that a go. Alright, scramble down quickly. Um, I won't stay long because it's just starting to rain now. Get back up there if I can. <laughs> Hopefully I can. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, not a bad first coastal uh, hammock camp spot, eh? That was actually pretty easy getting back up there. I think what I might do in future though, if I do come back to this spot, bring some rope with me. Just kind of tie it on the strongest tree. Just leave it there because no one's going to see it. I know that's not very leaves no trace, but literally it's a scramble to get down here from there anyway, so yeah. Right, rain's coming, let's chill. Just started raining. Um, I don't know if you can hear it on the top, but yeah, it's gonna sit here and chill. Fog setting in. It's clouding over. I can just about make out the uh, the lights over at Plymouth. Probably won't be able to see on the GoPro, but there's some red lights kind of over there. That's at Devonport, um, the big naval base. There's a couple of lights over there. I can see. There's a couple of boats kind of you know going past every now and again. Um, lots of seabirds, some bats just flitting around a minute ago. Really peaceful here. All I can hear is the rain on the top and the um, the waves. It's lovely. Really peaceful. Glad it came out. I was kind of debating it, putting it off um, and then I thought nah I've not been out for ages. Um, and there are no ones that do come out. It's always the case. It just seems like so much effort to get out and do it. But then once I'm out, I, I really love it. So I'm going to try and make a conscious effort to come out more and do more stuff like this. Because this place is only like two and a half, three miles from where I live. You know, Vicky dropped me off. It took like, well, five, ten minutes, if that. Um, I drove out, jumped out the car, she drove home. Yeah, one of the reasons that I've come out tonight is mentally it does me the world of good um i work pretty labor intensive job i'm well <laughs> i'm a laborer <laughs> um so yeah I, I work monday to friday eight till four half four five half five whenever you know busy all week and then this is like my kind of you know time out um reset button kind of thing and i've not been out like i say since february so I think I just kind of, on my days off, like, you know, I, I, I had no interest in doing anything. Um, I just wanted to stay at home and chill and, you know, even going to the beach, excuse me, <laughs> even going to the beach across the road was like, you know, just effort. Um, it's, I don't know, it's hard to talk about. I know I mentioned to talk about stuff like this, but yeah, mentally, this, um, this, 
cheers me up basically. Um, you know, in the past I've been diagnosed with depression and anxiety. I say this massively helps. Um, I'm pretty sure I've never had a diagnosis, but you know, for the last what five years at least, pretty sure I've got ADHD on some sort of scale. Like I say, I've never had an actual um, diagnosis as such. Kind of look at maybe getting into the doctors and um, getting a proper professional opinion. But pretty much all of the symptoms, um, you know. I can go, yeah, that's me, yeah, I do that. You know, I'll see a list and pretty much eight out of 10 applies to me. So pretty sure I've got that. So this year is mainly about kind of addressing that, getting out, enjoying my hobbies, making time for my hobbies. Um, Cause one of the symptoms is kind of procrastinating and putting things off. Um, and the thought of starting a task and preparing for that task and then actually making a start on it is stressful, scary, doesn't interest me. But I know once I do that task, I get fully stuck into it. I just, you know, you hyperfixate. Um, even now, you know, I've gone off on a tangent and a rant. <laughs> um, but yeah, I wanted to talk about it, kind of get it out there, get it off my chest, because um, because that's the first kind of thing, isn't it, really? Making the effort, making the, uh, what's it? Yeah, talking about it is always the hardest step, basically, and kind of addressing it and um, taking it from there. Luckily, Vicky is really supportive and she's awesome and she understands and I've got friends who, again, are in a similar situation to me um, and they understand as well. And it's good to have someone to kind of relay, you know, um, experiences and things with. So you guys know who you are. Thank you very much. I appreciate you and I love you. Um, yeah, it's, it's just, just nature, man. It just cures everything doesn't it and again recently you know that um ufc fighter paddy the baddy that scouse guy um he's been kind of you know speaking out for men's mental health which is amazing um, one of his friends you know sadly took his own life and he's got this platform and he's using it for good and he's kind of talking about these issues and getting them out there getting people to talk about it which is epic um yeah at the minute mentally i'm, I'm doing pretty good it's just you know some days i struggle with kind of tasks and processing stuff and social situations i think with lockdown um not seeing people for so long <laughs> when i'm in like you know social situations now like say i go to a gig or you know i go shopping or you know the other week we're working at a festival um up near Bude. kind of being around the public like you know more than say five people kind of i just kind of close in and go all quiet and stuff you know so yeah be, being out here on my well yeah on my own is cool but it would be cool with other like-minded people um you know who have similar sort of stuff to what i have and are going through that'd be cool kind of like you know a, a lads meet up cornwall camping type thing um if you know of anything leave a comment um let me know um message me on instagram uh yeah, even if you're going through the same sort of stuff, you know, reach out, man. Just um, talk about it, you know. I'm here for you. I'm sure pe other people are there for me as well. So, yeah, let's talk about this shit. Looking back now, I should have probably got um, a lot more firewood because I'm down to my last, what, 10 bits of log. <laughs> Chuck a bit on there. Um, so, yeah, I was going to kind of feed this for the next hour or so, let it die down and get in my hammock. Um, I've just got my Kindle out and I've started to read 500 mile walkies, um, which I've had for ages. And looking at the synopsis of this book, I'll just read it to you. Um, Boogie is an unattractive but streetwise mongrel from Stockwell, used, used to traveling everywhere on London transport. His two-legged companion is Mark. This is a heroic study of survival against the odds, as together they take a journey up and down dale with rucksacks full of keno meat along Britain's longest footpath. And that's the southwest coast path, which is what I live on and which I am on now. Um, basically, I've heard good things about this book. Um, it's a guy, he walks the coast path with his dog, and from what I can tell, it is like a diary, um, similar to the salt path but with a dog in tow, and obviously Salt Path is an awesome book, and dogs are awesome as well, so I'm going to tuck into this, 500 mile walkies, 
Uh, I'll keep you guys posted on Instagram of what I think of it. If you haven't read it, check it out. If you have read it, let me know what you think about it, and uh, we can talk about it. All right, let's start this book. Get to the main bit. There we go, goes past. So it runs from Minehead in Somerset all the way around Cornwall to Poole in Dorset, 630 miles, which I would love to do one day. Realistically, I probably won't do it in one go, I'll do it in chunks. Uh, obviously, I live in Cornwall, so I've got a good base. I'm kind of near Plymouth here, so I can go kind of any direction and do chunks of it. I'm not sure you guys can see that, but there's um, a ferry going back out now. It's quite eerie because it's really silent. It's just a massive light going across the water. But yeah, it looks like a ferry going, um, just left Plymouth, going towards probably Santander, Spain. Right, so I've just woken up. <laughs> it's about 11 o'clock. I didn't realize how tired I was, so I've just got to go to bed. Uh, but I'll see you guys in the morning. I'm gonna try and get some sleep now. So far though, this pillow is super, super comfy. Under blanket is nice and warm. I'll use this for a while. Uh, really cozy. So far, I'm loving this new hammock. See you in the morning. Morning, everyone. I actually slept so well last night. Um, this pillow is so comfy. I think I woke up like maybe twice during the night. One time, I heard the munt jack somewhere up there because they kind of like screech or bark it's like a weird barky screech noise they make another time was guessing at high tide when the uh, the waves were crashing on the rocks down there obviously because subconsciously i know i'm by the sea and i'm camping so i've always got that kind of thing in my head like oh is the water coming in am i too close to the water kind of thing uh, but obviously i'm up on a cliff basically so but yeah slept so so good uh, i'm gonna get a coffee on now it's about half six i think quarter to seven um sunday morning i'm gonna get a coffee on now make some breakfast i've got a full pack of richmond uh veggie bacon there a couple of eggs and some pre-buttered bread uh and a little bottle of ketchup so big fat bacon egg sandwich and a nice pot of fresh coffee i brought my aeropress with me so I've got a proper coffee on an instant three in one crap. Uh, can't stand those, they're way too sweet. And then I've got uh, some oat milk as well. So yeah, get some breakfast on, pack up, and then we'll head off. So yeah, let's, uh, let's get some food on. So I ended up making my breakfast, but I didn't bother including that part in the vlog because I've just come to edit it now. And uh, there was no sound on any of the stuff I recorded after this part. Um, turns out the battery on the microphone died. I didn't know and just carried on talking. So I've just had to edit out about 15 minutes of unusable footage. Um, yeah, so here's the next part of me packing up and going home. All packed away now. It's like I was never here. Um, I've just covered up the bit of land that I cleared from a fire pit um, and just put back what was there basically. So obviously these massive bald mark, but um, Nothing can be done really about that. But yeah, whoever uses this spot, um, I've left it how I found it. So um, yeah, if it's if you're watching this video, um, whoever uses it, um, let me know. Follow me on Instagram, whatever. We'll uh, organise a camp if you're up for it. That'd be cool. Uh, maybe you can show me some of the spots nearby and uh, go up Dartmoor or something. I don't know. But yeah, gonna pack up now. Get my bags on. Get back up there, and then Vicky's picking me up in about. 40 minutes, so that should give me plenty of time to get back to the car park. Alright, left camp now, got to walk back up this um, overgrown track to get way up there. So uh, I'll see you guys at the top, it'll be a lot easier if I'm not filming. <laughs> oh, back on the road. 
That is a steep hill when you carry this backpack. So this is where I was originally going to camp last night. I um, don't know if it showed up on the video yesterday, but I've seen these all these bits of fireplaces and stuff. Um, last time I came uh, down here on a bit of a recce, when we came on that dog walk the other day, um, you might have seen on my Instagram, I saw one of my mates on the way out, and he was saying that he used for like bushcraft lessons and things, but it's not been used in years, so that explains the uh, fireplaces and stuff. I don't know what all this stuff is though. It's like all the walls everywhere and I said he's been here for ages. I try and do a bit of reading up when I get back. I'm trying to figure out what this place used to be. Look on the old maps. I've only lived in Cornwall almost three and a half years. I've only lived in this area for like two years, so there's a lot of history around here that I don't know about, which I kinda of want to read up on. So uh that's a thing for a rain day, I think. Let's do a bit of research on where I live. Always close the gate. Respect the countryside. Because it is beautiful. Hopefully the audio is a bit better now. The uh, microphone ran out of battery, so just been on charge for the last few minutes while I was walking up. So hopefully you can hear better now because it's a bit windy up here. Don't know if the GoPro mic could uh, pick up what I'm saying. Just grabbing a bit of second breakfast because I am an oversized hobbit. Mm. So nice. Better. I thought it was a bit hot, I forgot to take my uh, fleecy jumper off before I put my coat on so I just walked all that way with a t-shirt, a fleecy jumper and a big thick windproof coat so no wonder I was sweating, right, it's much nicer. All right, at the top of this hill now, one last look. Cloudy overcast day, about to rain but it's still beautiful. Right, well I'm going to end the video here because I'm knackered, battery's nearly flat on the GoPro, I brought two batteries with me and they're both nearly dead, microphone battery's not got that much left either so uh, yeah, um, thanks for joining me, if you like this video give it a like and a subscribe, um, follow me on Instagram, uh, all that shiz and uh, yeah, see you soon guys, thank you, bye.